Thank you for listening to WQPH 89.3 FM, Shirley Fitchberg, Queen of Perpetual Help, and welcome to another edition of WQPH's Local Matters. On this week's broadcast, we offer a special interview with our own Marianne Herald and authors Brenda and Meg, and they are the authors of Servants of the Upper Room, and it's a very special book that you'll be hearing about coming up next. The song during the break is called Spirit of the Living God, sung by Helen Lenahan. Well, hello and good day. We have two very special guests joining us today on Local Matters, uh, Brenda Kindlin and also Meg Koss. Uh, you might hear their message on YouTube, and this program today will be also be placed on YouTube so you can share it with people. Meg, say hello and tell us a little bit about yourself and the work you and Brenda have been doing. Good morning. Again, my name is Meg Koss. I am a daughter of God, a mother of three beautiful children, a grandmother, and I received a beautiful message from the Blessed Virgin Mary on October 2nd, 2018, through much prayer and discernment, evolved into a beautiful prayer book that we just received ecclesiastical approbation from the Church. Now we'd like to share this message with as many people as possible, this beautiful message for a priest. And Brenda, how did you get involved? You member of the Servants of the Upper Room? Absolutely. Meg and I were in a Bible study together. She suggested, and I concurred, that we needed to continue meeting for just for prayer during the summer when the Bible study was on hiatus. It is from that point that uh, it was put on her heart to create a prayer for priest, and the rest, as they say, is history. Yes. So talk some more, Meg. What is the message you'd like to let our listeners know that it's very important, what your work is? What is the essence of your prayer book? Well, so it all began with, uh, well, let me give you the message first. Um, On October 2nd at 1 a.m., I was woken up and heard very clearly say a prayer of love and thanksgiving every time you look upon my beloved priest and I will repossess their hearts. And I knew this was from the Blessed Virgin Mary. I was just blown away. All I have to do is look at my priest and say, I love you and I thank you, and and Mary will give them the graces they need. Through that, over the next couple years, prayers began to form, which we were eventually asked to put into a prayer book. But the very interesting thing was, is before we started this prayer group, it was just going to be a, a prayer group for our, our country and for... Um, all those that God laid on our heart. The night before we started the prayer group, I was praying the Luminous Mysteries. And as I got to the third Luminous Mystery, the Kingdom of God is at hand, I was just really meditating on the Kingdom of God is at hand, and I kept saying, the Kingdom of God is at hand. And our bedroom shook, and we've moved a lot. We've lived in several cities where we've been in earthquakes, so we just assumed Memphis is in a fault line, there was an earthquake. And we got up in the morning, there was no earthquake. I prayed, Lord, you know, what does this mean? And a friend who was a nun called me, and I explained to her what happened, and she said, wow, that's right out of the Acts of the Apostles. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servant to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And I thought, wow, that must mean something very special is going to happen with this prayer group. And you need to add the rest of the Acts. And then they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the Word of God with all boldness. And your room shook. (laughs) Yeah, my room shook. So within uh, two weeks of starting the prayer group, we were asked to make the prayer group to pray for the priests and the bishops of the diocese. And I was asked to put together a prayer book and to write a special prayer which I did. And in the prayer, I wrote, in the prayer, I asked the Blessed Virgin Mary to help our prayers of love through the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Sacred Heart of Jesus, help our prayers of love to create a spark that would become a flame that would spread like a wildfire across our diocese, country, and the world to create new and holy shepherds for her flock and soldiers for her church. About six or eight months later, I was woken with this prayer, say a prayer of love and thanksgiving every time you look upon my beloved priest, and I will repossess their hearts. 
And I believe this is the spark that we prayed for. I had really praying about this. I realized that this was the answer to our prayer because I thought, why me? Why, why would the Blessed Mother give me this prayer? And I realized it was the answer to the prayer that our, our prayer group was praying every week. And so it, it's, it was beautiful. Yes. Yes. And then what happened? Now, what and diocese were you in? The Diocese of Memphis at the time. Mm-hmm. Memphis, Tennessee. Yes. And didn't you tell me that the bishop asked you to do a prayer group for the diocese or for the priests? Yeah, we were asked to um, pray for the bishop and, and all the priests of the diocese. So we prayed for them every Wednesday by name. And actually, they continue to do so. My husband and I have since moved to Houston, Texas. But Brenda and the prayer group still meet every Wednesday and pray for the bishop, all the priests and seminarians of the diocese by name. It's so beautiful. Our priests are so sad, the ones that see what's happening. And when they know we're praying for them, they're overjoyed. So you're doing God's work. And, you know, the important thing about this message, too, is it's so simple. And I think we often pray for our priests, but we forget to tell God that we love him and we thank him for our priests because no matter what priest is in your diocese, no matter how faithful he is or or if he needs extra prayers, they still bring us the Eucharist. They still bring us the most precious body and blood of Jesus. They still give us absolution from our sins. So we need to remember to thank God for them. Yes. And so we need an army of people giving prayers of love and thanksgiving, not only for our priests, but through our baptism, we're all priest, prophet, and king. So for every single person that sits in the church with us. You know, and Meg, after Our Lady gave you that prayer, you were fervent in um, praying for priests and bishops. You really took to heart what Mary had told you, and you brought that message to another prayer group we were in, that we were an intercessory prayer group. So on Tuesdays, we really started to pray with that prayer of Mary's for our priest. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. And so now, then now your, your prayer booklet has evolved, and it's gone to press, I believe. Tell us the status of where your booklet is. The booklet has now received ecclesiastical approbation, from the Diocese of Memphis. It was looked at by a priest, an exorcist, two canon lawyers, and two bishops, and it was given a special blessing from Bishop Strickland of Tyler, Texas. Bishop Strickland of Tyler, Texas said, I encourage you to share this prayer book broadly, and I truly appreciate your desire to pray for priests and bishops. We need your prayers. Powerful. Very powerful. So that's the juncture you're at now, and we look at the condition in our world with people still frightened, kind of imprisoned in their homes, afraid to go out. And so the only thing that's going to help us is to support our priests, and we believe that will help with the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. When the priests who need to come back, come back, and that could be the trigger that we've been waiting for for a very long time. So whether that's true or not, we'll soon find out, won't we? Yes, yes, that's it. This could bring about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that our bishops and priests need. Yes. Um, And they discovered a way to to pray for our priest uh, virtually. Uh, She discovered it, and then she saw that in the prayer of St. Paul, which is Ephesians 4, 15 through 19, that St. Paul tells us that we can have the eyes of our hearts enlightened. And so we use this prayer to pray virtually. Now that we know how to use that word virtually, we pray for priests is the ones that we see in person, one that we might be looking at a picture of, or just one that we carry in our heart and we pray for them. So we can pray for everyone that way through the indwelling of the Holy Trinity. Beautiful. Beautiful. So where do you go from here, Servants of the Upper Room? I love the title. How did you derive that title? I'd program? like to say that. Uh, we, we were praying at our friend Terry's house, and it's an upper room. 
she has a prayer room, upper room. And then one day I connected it with Meg's room shaking, which was in her prayer room, which was an upper room. So I said, Meg, we are the upper room prayer group. And she made the connection with Acts 4, 29 through 31. She said, um, and now, Lord, look upon your threats and grant to your servants to speak your word. So we, like, just like a snap of a finger, we became the servants of the upper room. Beautiful. That quote from Acts is so appropriate for the times we're in right now. I want to amplify you on that thought. Oh, yeah. The Acts of the Apostles are so appropriate for the times we are in right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we need to speak the Word of God with all boldness. Do you see that happening in our society? I think people are, some people are starting to wake up to see what's going on around us. And I hope that through these prayers, more and more people, eyes will be opened. Yes. Yes. And I see a network of holiness happening. Look at this. Look how we connected with you, Mary Ann. I think the Lord is and Our Lady, and let's not forget St. Saint Joseph. Saint Joseph. Power yes. of the three hearts. They are orchestrating something powerful as we speak. Yeah, we're just waking up every day with another challenge. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's very exciting, I can't tell you, even though it's very sad in a lot of ways. It's so exciting to see people who have been like, you know, what are those things that sleep a long time and wake up? Beers, they hibernate. <laughs> there's some beers that are hibernating, and there's um, also some kind of flies that do that. <laughs> I'd like to think of butterflies. <laughs> butterflies, yes. So all of our sleeping brethren are becoming our ladies' butterflies. Hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. So, well, I am so excited to be part of this, and we hope to put your a booklet on our website so people could download it. And how would they be able to get a, a copy in print? And can people help you with this ministry? Through our website, we have an email. Just contact us through the email right now, and then we'd be happy to mail books out. Um, right. So just contacting us, and through the website is servantsoftheupperroom.com. Okay. And, also- and uh, people can download the book for free from the website if they'd like, or, or they can contact us and we can mail out printed copies. On our phones, on your phone, there are ways to view it uh, simply on your phone as a PDF. And many people are praying the book on their phone, just like that. Well, could we say a prayer now, one of your favorite prayers? from the book, so people can hear the simplicity and beauty. What prayer would you like Uh, to pick? Yes, let's say the prayer to open the heavenly sanctuary. Absolutely. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O righteous Father, we offer you everything at every moment in time, and even before time began, from your most precious Son, our Lord, Savior, and King, in union with that glorious high point at Mass, where the heavenly sanctuary is opened, so that through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we offer you love, praise, glory, and honor for sending the gift of your Son as expiation for our sins. In this ceaseless heavenly offering, Father, we lift up our prayers for everyone and every need at every moment in time, for the sick, the dying, the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, in the universal church, our country, our families, and all those that you have laid upon our hearts. Amen. Amen. And for all those who are listening to this program. Beautiful. Thank you. We have a lot of people with a lot of heavy crosses at this particular time that we're all praying the body of Christ, right? Yes. Oh, uh, And Brenda, do you have a particular prayer of the booklet that you'd like to pray? Yes, I would. There's a prayer to the three hearts of the Holy Family, because the whole journey of the prayer group and the book has been the indwelling of the Holy Trinity and the three hearts of the Holy Family. And this prayer was put on Meg's heart, and it's the memorari to the three hearts of the Holy Family. Remember, O most sacred heart of Jesus, united with the immaculate heart of Mary and the pure heart of St. Joseph, that never was it known 
that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O blessed Holy Family. To thee we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. Despise not our petitions, but in thy great mercy hear and answer us. Amen. Two powerful prayers. Yep. And you know what? Before, should we say a prayer for our priest real quick, too? Absolutely. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus, we ask for the indwelling of the Holy Trinity to accompany us as we look upon all of our priests, from the highest to the lowest, with your divine love. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for all of our priests. Jesus, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for all of our priests. Holy Spirit, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for all of our priests. Beautiful, beautiful. Do you have a special one for bishops? We actually, interesting that you ask, we also, for our prayer, we have the battle page. It was very interesting when we put together the book because it was made very clear to me at one point in time that this book was not a devotional, it's a battle plan. When you contacted us, Mary Ann, and asked if there was a chaplet, we put together a chaplet, and the prayers worked out beautifully to be prayed on the chaplet of the Seven Sorrows of Mary. And we pray that chaplet daily for our bishops. Powerful. Can you pray it now with Brenda? Do you have time to do that? We can pray without doing the seven segments, but we can do the first segment. And it begins, of course, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We go into the prayer to open the heavenly sanctuary that Meg already prayed. And then we do the prayer to repossess and heal hearts that she prayed. Well, I can do it quickly. So in the name of Jesus, we ask for the indwelling of the Holy Trinity to accompany us as we look upon your bishops at every moment in time with your divine love. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for our bishops. Jesus, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for our bishops. Holy Spirit, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for our bishops. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus, our High Priest, with Mary, new Ark of the Covenant, and St. Joseph, terror of demons, crush the walls around their hearts in the blood of Jesus, Wash them, restore them, fill them with divine light, life, and love. And I'm going to pray this seven times. Crush the walls around their hearts in the blood of Jesus. Wash them, restore them, fill them with divine light, life, and love. Crush the walls around their hearts in the blood of Jesus. Wash them, restore them, fill them with divine light, life, and love. Crush the walls around their hearts in the blood of Jesus. Wash them, restore them, fill them with divine light, life, and love. Crush the walls around their hearts in the blood of Jesus. Wash them, restore them, fill them with divine light, life, and love. Crush the walls around their hearts in the blood of Jesus. Wash them, restore them, fill them with divine light, life, and love. Crush the walls around their hearts in the blood of Jesus. Wash them, restore them, fill them with divine light, life, and love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And from that, we would have done that sequence seven more times, and we would have had go into closing prayers. That includes the memorari. You know, can we take a break? Marian, can we take a break for a sec? Sure. Hello, friends. This is Father Wade Menezes with the Fathers of Mercy and EWTN, and I want to thank you for listening to Queen of Perpetual Help Radio, WQPH 89.3 FM. Mold us, 
So we're back from our break with our guests, Meg and Brenda, from the Servants of the Upper Room. Meg, what is your Mar- next thought? Marianne, we're going to pray the battle page, the battle to repossess and heal hearts for our bishops. Perfect. Okay. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, O oh, righteous Father, we offer you everything at every moment in time and even before time began from your most precious Son, our Lord, Savior, and King, in union with that glorious high point at Mass, where the heavenly sanctuary is opened, so that through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we offer you love, praise, glory, and honor for the gift of your Son as expiation for our sins, so we could become sharers in your divine light, life, and love. In the ceaseless heavenly offering, Father, we lift up our prayers for everyone and every need at every moment in time, for the sick, the dying, the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere in the universal church, our country, our family, and all those that you have laid upon our hearts. And we lift up now our bishops. In the name of Jesus, we ask for the indwelling of the Holy Trinity to accompany us as we look upon our bishops at every moment in time with your divine love. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for our bishops. Jesus, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for our bishops. Holy Spirit, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for our bishops. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus, our High Priest, with Mary, the new Ark of the Covenant, and St. Joseph, Terror of Demons, crush the walls around their hearts in the blood of Jesus, wash them, restore them, fill them with divine light, life, and love. Crush the walls around their hearts in the blood of Jesus, Wash them, restore them, fill them with divine light, life, and love. Crush the walls around their hearts in the blood of Jesus. Wash them, restore them, fill them with divine light, life, and love. Crush the walls around their hearts in the blood of Jesus. Wash them, restore them, fill them with divine light, life, and love. Crush the walls around their hearts in the blood of Jesus. Wash them, restore them, fill them with divine light, life, and love. Crush the walls around their hearts in the blood of Jesus. Wash them, restore them. Fill them with divine light, life, and love. Crush the walls around their hearts in the blood of Jesus. Wash them, restore them. Fill them with divine light, life, and love. Our closing prayers, the three hearts prayer. Most sacred heart of Jesus, open the hearts and minds of sinners everywhere at every moment in time to the truth and light of God. By thy holy and immaculate conception, O Mary, deliver us from evil. Heal and repossess all hearts. Set them on fire and make them pure. 
most pure heart of St. Joseph, through the hidden sufferings of your heart, teach us to be obedient and united to the divine will. Guide us and protect us in truth. Memorare to the three hearts of the Holy Family. Remember, O most sacred heart of Jesus, united with the immaculate heart of Mary and the pure heart of St. Joseph, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O blessed Holy Family. To thee we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. Despise not our petitions, but in thy great mercy, hear and answer us. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Joy and peace. Rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again. Rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, then the God of peace will be with you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And that ends our battle to repossess in Heal Hearts prayers. What's so important, if anybody, if they would like to fulfill Mary's request by saying the battle page, or if they're not able to do that, just remember, every time you look upon your beloved priest, say a prayer of love and thanksgiving, and Mary will repossess their hearts. Very beautiful. Well, thank you, ladies, for joining us. We hope to have you back soon and get an update on where your booklet has gone and all the priests that are jumping with joy to have this prayer. Hmm? Amen? Amen? Amen. Okay. For you who are listening, our brothers and sisters, please pray for them in this long journey, but it's very fruitful for them when they go and see the beautiful crown for getting the prayer for priests out there. And you need to help. Thank you for listening. Till next time, this is Local Matters. God bless. Thank you for listening to another edition of WQPH's Local Matters. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast and hope you have a blessed week.